Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about retro video games. Today I'm back to the NES and I'm covering a game that stars a martial arts master, actor, stuntman, and even singer. It's Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu was developed by Now Production and published by Hudson Soft. It was released for NES in 1990 and is an action platformer. In a very short intro sequence, we see Jackie and his twin sister, Josephine. She is captured by an evil sorcerer, and Jackie needs to get her back so they can save China together. The gameplay is just what you'd expect from a kung fu game. You can jump, kick, punch, and crouch, and the controls are tight and responsive. There are special moves you can get from pickups and use a limited amount of times, like 180 and 360 degree spin kicks, an upward sky attack, and tornado attack, which somersaults you through the air, doing damage to anything you touch. There's also a limited use special ranged attack called Psycho Wave, which can be charged up by holding down the B button. The UI at the bottom of the screen shows your current health level, which has a maximum of 6 hit points, along with your current special move and how many uses you have left. The five dots show how many uses of Psycho Wave you have left, and the number next to the red orb shows how many bonus jade you've collected. This is dropped by enemies, and if you collect 30 of them, your health and Psycho Wave uses will be refilled. The game is short, consisting of only five levels, each of which ends in a boss fight. You'll go through various outdoor levels filled with animal threats, indoor areas filled with spike pits and obstacles, avoid a floor made of bubbling lava, jump across the backs of flying turtles in the sky, and even see some more mechanical-looking locations. Each level changes things up considerably as you move from screen to screen. For example, in level 1, you'll start out outside, seeing waterfalls and forests in the distance, and fighting animals like birds and tigers. Then, you'll move indoors to traverse water obstacles and seesawing platforms while being accosted by flying fish and disembodied hands that toss nunchucks. Then you'll face spike pits and other martial artists before climbing a series of wooden platforms that take you towards the boss. The way the gameplay changes keeps things interesting. At some points, it's a pure platforming challenge. At others, there will be tougher enemies to defeat or avoid. There are auto-scrolling segments mixed in which force you to move quickly and anticipate challenges and moving platforms to ride. Each level also has a couple hidden bonus stages. If you step in the right spot, a bell will appear and hitting it will take you to these stages. Some involve leaping from cloud to cloud, and some are about hitting target dummies. The score you get in these will be used to refill your ranged attack uses, health, or even grant extra continues. However, there is one level that missed the mark for me and seemed less impressive than the others, and that's level 3. It starts with floating platforms and turtle shells you'll need to jump across. While this isn't bad in theory, it's the same thing for six screens, and other than a couple birds at the end, the only real threat is falling. Once that's done, you'll get to a water area, where you can ride a floating log through various obstacles. Again, not a bad environment or terrible gameplay, but this goes on for eight screens before you finally get to the boss. It just seems like less effort went into this level than the others, and it got very repetitive. Thankfully, this is the only one that made me feel this way. The bosses are really where your kung fu skills are put to the test. You'll be fighting everything from a Buddha statue to a Shaolin giant, and, my favorite, the huge pink cyclops in the sky. I like this one because you have to handle bouncing on clouds as you try to avoid his attacks and punch him right in his eye. The penultimate boss, Mad Marshall, is the most challenging as he's the same size as you and has the same skills. 
It's a bit like battling yourself, and the combat strategies that worked for previous bosses don't really work here. The final boss introduces something completely new, as you fight on a floating platform that you can maneuver. One of the things that stands out immediately upon starting the game is the large, expressive sprites. They really give the game some character. Depending on what you're doing, Jackie will go through a number of clearly visible emotions. Happy. Determined. Angry. Pleased with himself. Ow! My ass! And dead. I guess those last couple aren't really emotions. Likewise, the bosses also have some very amusing facial expressions, especially when you hit them. The wonderful sprites, along with the attractive locations that make good use of color, make the game very aesthetically pleasing. The hanging scroll the overworld map is pictured on is a very charming finishing touch. The music is also quite good. It's not something I found particularly memorable, which I know is something many will disagree on, but it is energetic and fits each level well. In terms of difficulty, Jackie Chan does have its challenges. When you take damage, the period of invulnerability is incredibly short and makes it easy to get hit again immediately, but I still found it easier than many NES platformers. It does many things that make it more forgiving when you do make mistakes, as well as feel less dated than it otherwise could. When I review older games, I review them as I am now, an adult with a ton of games to choose from and 30 years of gaming experience to draw upon. Now, I don't have unrealistic expectations. I know what was technically feasible when these games were made, but many of them had design decisions that felt overly punishing and make the games feel less fun to play now. Things like instant death mechanics, no checkpoints, lack of auto-fire in shooters, or no saves in very long games. Action Kung Fu was designed in such a way that feels less punishing to someone playing it now and skips most of those retro frustrations. Though at any point in the game you only have a single life, you get six hit points to work with, so getting hit by an enemy once isn't the end of the world. There are also very few instant death mechanics. When I first saw water in a level, I assumed that landing in it would kill me. Not the case. Turns out, water isn't damaging to Jackie like it is so many other platforming heroes. Even more dangerous elements, like spikes and lava, will only reduce your health rather than outright kill you. There are no bottomless pits to fall in, and when you miss a jump on one of the climbing screens, you'll just drop down until you land on another platform. When you lose some of your health, there are many ways to get it back. Frogs, which drop the special attack abilities, can also drop noodle bowls, which give you health. You can also get health from the bonus stages, collecting 30 Jade, and it's topped up every time you start a new level. But if you do lose all six health and get a game over, which will still likely happen, you get five continues, which can also be increased in the bonus stages. When you use a continue, you'll start at the beginning of the same screen you were on, rather than having to start from the beginning of the level. There's even a cheat code for 99 continues written right into the manual, should you need it. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu is a fantastic platformer. It has colorful, great-looking levels, fun boss fights, and a lot of charm. While it can be challenging to play, it's very forgiving of mistakes, making it much less frustrating to play than many other games of its era. I highly recommend this one. If you want to see more Hudson Soft, check out my review of Adventure Island, or another of my videos. I also have a Patreon if you want to support my content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.